Dominic. Hey, we're um, we're asking all the fighters what kind of differences have you guys seen since you arrived in Jacksonville uh, related to the precautions the UFC is taking uh, with the coronavirus. I uh, I feel like we're being treated like true professionals, and uh, everything's cut off from the hotel. Everything's cleaned up for us. Everything's our own, so we have our own sauna, we have our own rooms. We're treated like royalty. I feel like this is how it should be every single fight, not just during Corona. It, it does sound like some of the fighters like appreciate this maybe fight week more than more than normal, just because of what you were talking about, all the attention. It's not just attention. I mean, everybody's nicer. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's more attentive. Everybody's more kind. Everybody's uh, in pure service to us. Like we're like we're cutting weight and like we're dealing with the uh, pandemic at the same time so it's like the pandemic adds a little sprinkle of we feel sorry for you almost but if it, it's like man it should be this way every time it really should i believe this is a uh, professionalism by the ufc uh currently and i've never felt a fight week like this in my life a couple of fighters mentioned the uh the testing with the swab up the noses you know being uncomfortable or whatever what, what was it like for you and was that as soon as you got to the hotel you had to do that yeah, yeah. Um, we pretty much get right to it. Make sure that we're all um, all Corona free. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> and then, did you stay in your hotel? I mean, did you stay in your hotel room all night? And, and is that different from what you normally would do? I mean, I know you're not going to go out, you know, late at night on a fight week. But I mean, I don't know if you usually like to go out at all, just walk around the area and stuff like that. Was that different? Well. You gotta really just put into perspective what's different for you. Are you able to leave your home? Are you able? I mean, not really. You're not supposed to, right? We're in the right. same. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but we're under the same pretenses as everybody at home. So we're not getting treated any better, or we're not getting treated any worse. I think we're just being, we're just getting treated with a ton of attention, and it's nice to be respected. Very good. Thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. Caroline Pierce from BT Sport is up next. Hey, Dom. So good to see you back in a fight week. And I just wanted to ask you, what does it feel like to be back preparing for a fight just a day away from, from weigh-ins, um, albeit a very different environment to what you're used to? I'm thankful for food and water. <laughs> that's, that's, it's, a, it's a reality check. I feel like everybody in the world should have to go through this one time in their life so that you can be thankful for the little things. I could jump out in that water right now, butt naked, and drink the entire lake. <laughs> I could drink it all. So I'll tell you right now, like it, it, it creates a thankfulness for what for the little things. I'm, I'm grateful to be in this position right now. And obviously, we know you've had a considerable time away. That's nothing new for you. We we know that you don't see ring rust as a real thing. So just describe to us how's your body feeling right now, health wise, the shoulder, etc. I mean, uh, I'm in the weight cut period, so that kind of sucks, but that's always sucky. Um, other than that, I feel, I, I said it in the, in the countdown, I feel like money. My body's healthy. Now, I was fighting with a shoulder injury for many, for about three, three title fights. I had that shoulder injury, and I was just shooting stem cells into my body to try to make do with the best I could, and it was constantly aching, constantly sore, uh, hitting pads and wrestling, and I was constantly having to ice. Now, I don't have to do any of that. Now it's stronger than ever. Uh, my knees feel stronger than ever. My hands are completely rebuilt. Um, I feel great, to be honest. I really do. I feel stronger than I did uh, you know, in a long time. And, uh, you know, when I went through that, that year of title fights, how many champions can you say in the history of the sport? Uh, it's not a lot. I, I would almost be certain that I fought three title fights in a year. That really took a toll on me that year. So the time off has served me very well. So straight back into a title fight, of course, against Henry Cejudo. But you don't feel he's fought necessarily the, the caliber of fighter as yourself at, at bantamweight and, and in the past. So what do you what do you feel you bring to the table here that he may not be used to, even being the Olympic athlete that he is? Well, it's the range in the in the space. That's that's a big difference. So Marlon Marais is a linear fighter, straightforward and back. Not a whole lot of side to side or filling the gaps with angles so there's all different planes of fighting that i fight on and none of them are wrong or right to me not just forward and back one two i'm, a, I'm long and lanky 
also I can wrestle. I have a wrestling background. So where Henry Cejudo knows how to grind, I know how to grind. Instead of getting tired and pulling back, I grind with him. Um, the people that he's beaten, uh, Joseph Benavidez, TJ Dillashaw, beat TJ Dillashaw at 125 pounds. I think at 135 pounds, that's a completely different fight. I think TJ Dillashaw is more durable and can take the shot that he couldn't at 125. That's why I never went to 125, is I knew I wouldn't be durable enough to, to make. I could make the weight, but my body wouldn't be durable enough to take the fight and perform to my highest level. So I know 35 is the lowest I can go. So um, Benavidez, um, you know, beat him. I fought Benavidez twice. Demetrius Johnson beat him once, lost to him once. But on the second loss, or on the second win that Henry beat him, it was close. And it's, they're the same height. So he was able to utilize the clinch a lot. He was able to u- utilize knees a lot. And he was also able to uh, out-wrestle him, which is what I was also able to do. So there's a lot of different things that you look at in the people that Henry's beaten. Not only have I beaten uh, pretty much every single guy that he's beaten, but I beat him for titles. And other than Marlon Marais, um, I've, I've definitely had a lot more title fights and a lot more time in that octagon than him. All that stuff added up. It's ring generalship. It's understanding where to be. It's understanding how to use the time. Understanding how to use the fight uh, in every single minute, in every single second of every single round. And um, that's what I do very well. Of course, getting the win and the title is what you're going for. But how would you like it to play out? Are you looking for cage time? Are you looking to, to go those five rounds because you've probably been out the cage for so long? Or is it a fast finish that you're after? Everybody, I'm going to tell you something. And that's why I hate hearing I'm going for the finish. We are all going for the finish. Every single one of us wants to walk in there and do what happened, to, or what Masvidal did. If we could fight every single fight like that, it would be that way. Jump in there, jump the jump guy in the knee in the face, and the fight's over, and we walk out with our check. Every single person wants that. Does it happen? No. It's like going into a football, uh, a Super Bowl football game, and saying that it's not going to go into overtime, or that they're not going to rely on a field goal to win it. It's just... They're the two best teams in the world, so you expect it to go down to the nitty-gritty, or it's going to be a blowout. It's very rarely, you know, not that. A blowout or right up to the last second. Um, You don't, I don't hold on and attach to any of that. I just let it be what it's going to be. I hear what you're saying, Tom, but do you remember Brad Pickett saying he felt disappointed if he didn't get punched in the face quite a bit and and go the full distance? Yeah, well, I mean, Brad Pickett is not me. I do if I can go in there and not have you lay a finger on me, that's what I will do. Now, that might not be what anybody else wants. I'm sure a lot of people would like to see me get punched, but and maybe Brad Pickett likes to get punched. I don't. I don't want you to touch me. Don't touch me at all. <laughs> and last question from me. You've been preparing with Jeremy Stevens, obviously, also on this card. How beneficial has that been for both of you training together and preparing for such a good night? Well, he's just so big and strong, and uh, it's hard and different and like powers a lot of stuff uses a lot of power he's got extremely good balance good wrestling tons of experience like all the stuff that i was saying he's got as much experience as me maybe not on five round title fights but in the in the octagon in general he's got tons of fights over 20 fights in the ufc alone so that kind of experience is just so good to feed off of he's got so much so many good things to uh to bounce ideas off of and I'm, and just training alone is just amazing because um, he's bigger than me got about, at any given time, between 15 and 20 pounds of weight. So I'm a little bit quicker than him, so I add a speed advantage that I, I get to utilize on him. And he has a size advantage that he gets to utilize on me. And his training partners, it's a perfect push-pull. Best of luck, Dominic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Manabu Takashima from MMA Planet in Japan. Hi, Dominic. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, MMA improved a lot the last three years, especially in the scrum game. And when you're taking your opponent down, but uh, he goes goes back to his own foot quickly. So which part of the games did you improve mostly la- rather than last years? last three years? Very educated question. I appreciate that. Um, I would say that I've definitely been working on holding people down too, utilizing the takedowns to, to create advantages and you know, create an opening. Things on the in specific areas, um, not just in submissions, but also on the way up and in the clinch and everywhere, you know. But if you look at Henry, he's got a habit of being very good with inside trips from overhooks um, on both mm-hmm. sides and underhooks on both sides. Uh, and he also likes to switch to the clinch, go from the clinch 
two overhooks and underhooks to hit his inside trips and mm -hmm. um, a lot of different things that he uses there um, to, to get it. So, yeah, I need to be scrambly. He's going to be scrambly in the 135-pound division. I think that that's just something that you see a lot because everybody knows martial arts so well. So, mm -hmm. what saying is very true. It's important that we, if takedowns are, are happen, that we take, they, we take advantage of them. And that's something that I look to. Okay, well, right. and also uh, fighting in no audience venue, so you get an example with Japanese from us, uh, no, no noisy. Is this a pos positive, positive or negative impression uh, you have? And then, uh, what are you realize as Japanese MMA from? Yeah, I'm more the reason why I created that that relation is um, it's been done before. I've I used to watch. Pride all the time, and it would be silent. And uh, from what I, from my experience of the Japanese community, they're very educated in the sport, and they want every single move, and they respect every single move. So that's why they're quiet and they listen um, and they pay attention to everything. It looks like to me. I mean, I don't know. I've never fought in Japan, but that's what it looks like when I watch. When I would watch Pride, uh, the respect is there very highly for martial arts and for us as martial artists. So I'm looking at it as that. If it's been done with those athletes before where they're fighting in pure silence, they can only hear each other's corners, and I can do that. Mm -hmm. It's silent. So I'm kind of visualizing it's going to be like if I fought in Japan, where it would just be silent uh, in the crowd. Whether there's people there or not doesn't matter. At the end, you get to enjoy the people because you guys are huge fans. But during the fight itself, it's silent. So it's been done before. I can do it. And that's more what I meant by it. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Carlos Contreras for the last question for Dominic. Hey, Dominic, can you hear me there? Yes, sir. Hey, Dom. Um, uh, two days ago, you, you spoke about being, or you debated with uh, with Henry about being the MJ of the of the bantamweight division, and, and lots of people, including myself, think that you are the greatest in, in the bantamweight division in, in, in MMA. So, uh, does it? Do you feel that? Coming back after uh, more than three years uh, adds that to, to your legacy. That not just being some of the analysts like saying that you are the greatest, but like this is would be like that. There's no more argument if you come back and you be the guy like Henry Zahul. Yeah, not. I mean, I don't think there's argument either way. Personally, I think that this is something that's unforeseen. I mean, to, to take a fight, anybody who took a fight on this card, Eric Thomas, lack of a better term, I would say, we're getting out of our country. Zone. We're taking fights on short notice. Cowboy police basically said in building a bar and had two weeks and just said, okay, let's do this. How many other guys have to do that? You know, I had four weeks to prepare for the title fight after a long layoff. That's not easy. I'm the underdog in this matchup. I know how good Henry is. Um, I keep hearing you know, Daniel Cormier and Henry and all these guys saying, don't overlook me, don't overlook me. It's like, how dumb do you really think I am to overlook anybody ever? I'm not silly. I'm one of the best in the sport for a reason because I respect all my opponents in every facet, every sport. But I am confident. That's not. That's the biggest thing. And I am the best in this division. Win, lose, or draw, I'm the best in this division. We don't know what's going to happen um, ever in these fights. But I've, I've got the resume. I've beaten. I've, I've cleared out the bantamweight division at one point. Be everybody on the on the on the bracket when I was there. I was ranked number one in pound for pound list for over six months. Uh, the only person that was ranked ahead of me was Demetrius Johnson, and I smoked him in my round title fight. It's not close. And um, I've been the top of the game for a long time. And then I stopped for a bit because I had to heal the body up and, injury, and some injuries happened. Here I am again, right back into another title fight. If you look at my resume, that's what we're talking about right now, um, which is what you brought up, my resume. All my fight is a title. It's a very few fights were not five-round title fights. So... Not a lot of fighters have done that. Uh, um, do you, we have three, or at least three, because Justin is also Mexican-American from, from one part, uh, Mexican-Americans on, on this uh, card, but you are the one that has a Mexican boxing trainer that trains with a lot of Mexicans in, in, in Alliance MMA. So what does it mean for you to have in this uh, uh, fight close to Cinco de Mayo and being one of the fir very fir first Mexican-Americans to, 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 uh, to shine in this, this sport? gives me chills, to be honest, hearing you even say that. I got chills right now. Because, you know, for the, for the brown people, the Mexicans, for the Spanish descent, it's, it's a big thing. Watching, watching this. And, and then even Henry Saludo is also 
Mexican descent. So to put not only Arizona on the map, but Puerto Rico on the map from that area, you know, my family might out through Brownsville, that part of Mexico, um, and in, into the United States that way. So, um, you know, to, to be coming from that background, be where I'm at, be representing Mexican heritage, it's, it means everything to me. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Thank you.